For as long as there have been tall things, human beings have wanted to jump off them to see what will happen. Spoiler alert, the answer is usually horrible injuries. That's why it's so great that video games were invented, because they let us jump off super tall things to see what will happen with none of the permanent life-altering consequences. Here then are seven of the tallest, coolest things we've ever jumped off in video games. Enjoy! Unless you have vertigo, in which case, maybe I could interest you in a nice video about weird fighting games. Quick, take it before... Sorry, Batman. We didn't touch anything. In the Gotham of the Batman Arkham games, the tallest building in the city is Wayne Tower, corporate headquarters to Wayne Enterprises, owned by Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, which might explain why it's totally covered with convenient gargoyles and easily accessible grapple points. Right at the very top of Wayne Tower, you'll find Bruce Wayne's office, an imposing oak-panelled, marble-floored bolt hole with commanding views of Gotham's nicer neighbourhoods, a full bar, and a prop from the 1960s Batman series that makes Batman stuff come out of the floor. Don't forget to put those back before the cleaners come in. That could be awkward. Anyway, something else this office includes are balconies with easily hoppable railings, giving you an unrivaled opportunity to see what over 1,000 feet of freefall feels like. Ah, my favourite ride was probably Blackgate, but this is top three. Easy. Or if you prefer, it's the perfect spot for a leisurely glide around the city. Or as leisurely as anything is in Gotham City, I guess. Is this seat taken? I'm not looking for company. You're in Bowery, my friend. In this city, no one drinks alone. So, what are we celebrating? <laughs> we aren't. But if you're keen to get your teeth kicked in, I'd be happy to oblige. The Saboteur is a game primarily remembered for two things. One, the atrocious Irish accent of its protagonist, Sean Devlin. Top of the morning to you. Or whatever time it is. And two, the fact that you could jump off the Eiffel Tower, if that's your idea of a good time. Son of a bitch! Of course, to do that, you'd actually have to get up there, and unlike today, where you pay your 25 euros to ride a series of lifts to the top, maybe stopping by the Michelin-starred restaurant for brunch, back in war-torn 1940s Paris, a lot of the middle stretch of your ascent had to be done the old-fashioned way, which is to say, via unbelievably dangerous free climbing. Eventually, the lifts kick back in and you make it to the top, at which point you are, of course, welcome to enjoy the view and then spend roughly 20 minutes painstakingly making your way back down to ground level in a safe and controlled manner. Or you can just bodily yeet yourself into the Parisian sky and hope that you manage to land in some water. Son of a bitch! Definitely not how that would go in real life, but that's also definitely not what Irish people sound like in real life, so I guess it's fine. Remember back in 2012 when Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner did a skydive out of space? Or the end of the movie Lockout, in which Guy Pearce did the same thing, only much higher up somehow? I'm thrilled that you would think of me. Well, if you fancy trying it yourself, No Man's Sky is the game for you. One of the many, many features of No Man's Sky that wasn't included at launch, but which showed up in the later update, No Man's Sky Next, was frigates, mid-sized starships with open landing bays that can sit in low orbit over planets. Wannabe Guy Pierce's, seriously, he went through atmospheric re-entry in regular astronaut wear, what the hell? Can recreate this feat by parking the frigate in low orbit and then taking a running leap from the landing bay. This is still a very bad idea, as space is always trying to kill you, and you'll need a good suit, plus life support systems that you can keep constantly recharging, otherwise you'll end up arriving on the planet's surface looking less like Guy Pierce and more like a smoking lump of coal. 
still it can be done, although it's going to take you a while, and your astronaut avatar is going to spend the whole time flailing around in a way that makes it very clear that they are absolutely not okay with this. See? It's fine. Stopping such a baby. The Los Santos of Grand Theft Auto V is full of tall things to hurl yourself off if the mood takes you, from construction sites to Mount Chiliad. For sheer spectacle though, nothing beats the Mays Bank Tower, which is both the tallest building in downtown LS and the most conveniently located to provide beautiful panoramas of the city, particularly at night. That's not why we're here though, of course. We're here for base jumping, and there's no better spot in Los Santos County than the Maze Bank Tower. Bonus points if you do it in first person. Of course, if that's not high enough for you, then may we recommend the story mission Did Somebody Say Yoga, in which Michael drinks a soda laced with hallucinogenic drugs and hallucinates being dropped out of an alien UFO at the highest possible point over the city, which to be honest, is a lot more chill of an experience than it sounds. And with none of the unpleasant results of actually jumping off a building. but some other unpleasant results of its own, I guess. The 2015's zombie smash em up Dying Light was based heavily on the ancient and noble practice of parkour, which is French for running in an extremely cool way. One of the core tenets of parkour is climbing, which means you'll be spending a lot of time in Dying Light up high. Unfortunately, one of the other tenets of parkour is not dying, so probably you're going to want to avoid flinging yourself off high objects unless you're absolutely sure there's something soft, like a bunch of garbage bags beneath you. <laughs> ah. You managed it. Ah. Nice landing. However, in the spirit of scientific inquiry, at some point, every dying light player has wondered to themselves what would happen if I were to jump off the highest point in the map. To answer that question, we have to head to the Antenna, a 410-foot broadcast tower in Haran that enjoys spectacular views over the city from an extremely precarious viewing platform that honestly, I'm getting dizzy just looking at. Still, we didn't climb all this way to not make a bold leap forward in gravity science, and also a bold leap forward off this edge. Maybe we'll hit something soft. <laughs> I cannot believe that worked. Assassin's Creed heroes are uniquely suited to jumping off tall objects, seeing as how they're able to survive falling from incredible fantastic heights as long as they land in some hay or something. And while the Assassin's Creed games have been full of lofty architecture for you to leap off of, the tallest building in the entire series from which you can eagle dive can be found in the most recent release, the Viking-centric Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Does our final battle draw near? Is this how Ragnarok begins? Without getting into too many spoilers, at one point in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, your Ivor will find themselves in Asgard, legendary home to the Norse gods. And showing the typical humility and restraint of gods, the architecture in Asgard is hardly what you'd call understated, featuring beautiful statues, fountains, and of course, huge imposing buildings. The most imposing of these is the absolutely colossal Tower of Heimdall, which easily dwarfs even the Lightning Zeus statue from Assassin's Creed Odyssey and, as you'd expect, it is indeed a synchronisation point for the area. As well as an irresistible point to jump off. Don't worry, there's some water at the bottom, I expect.
There is. Good news. That could have been awkward. Look, I realize you're eager to take the fight to the Institute, but it'll have to wait. The Brotherhood cannot allow those abominations to have a nuclear arsenal at their fingertips. You know, I'm almost starting to like these Brotherhood blokes. In the Fallout series, the Brotherhood of Steel are a fascist, quasi-religious techno-cult who love power armor, killing ghouls and super mutants, and of course, tooling around the wasteland in their massive airship, the Pridwin. While the Pridwin is a visible symbol of the Brotherhood's overwhelming military might and a stark warning to all those throughout the Commonwealth who would oppose them, it is also a super cool place to jump off if you fancy testing whether or not you take full damage while wearing power armour. No, is the answer. And hey, we're pretty close to some water here too. There's every chance we might be able to make it even without the power armour. But I landed in water? I'm sorry, I don't understand. So there you go, those were seven cool, tall things that we couldn't resist jumping off in video games. Did we miss your favourite? Drop your suggestion in the comments and remember to always keep your jumping off things confined to video games and not try it in real life. For more videos like this, subscribe to Outside Xbox or, even better, hit the bell icon on the bottom right of the screen to get a notification when we've got a new video. Thanks for watching!